We had a juicy star citizen server meshing and persistent streaming Q&A from Cloud Imperium where they talked about this core technology and its current plans and timeframes, as well as going into some detail of what it will enable. This is a summary of that belligerently large post and the questions posed therein. When will we see persistent streaming and server meshing in the persistent universe? Our current aim is to release persistent streaming and the first version of the replication layer, ideally between Q1 and Q2 of next year, so that will be 2022. We will then follow up with the first version of a static server mesh, barring any unforeseen technical complications between Q3 and Q4 of next year. So Matt could see us with Star Citizen 4.0 as early as Q3 of next year, in my opinion. What is the current state of the server meshing tech and what are the biggest issues holding it back? The short answer is the state is actually very advanced, though there are lots of steps um, that they've come from and are still going to. The road to server meshing started back in 2017 and to date there has been completion for object container streaming, working out what entities to stream in and out efficiently, entity authority and transfer, allowing servers to pass uh, authority between each other seamlessly. The replication layer and persistent streaming is almost complete and in its final stages. This has them copying states on multiple server nodes as well as accessing a database that stores every state and then can pass data between them and can save it in the database and send it to the other shard, all that sort of jazz. Uh, this will then lead them to static and dynamic server meshing with at least the static server meshing planned for completion later in 2022. This has areas of space and planets being on their own servers that seamlessly pass data between each other. Dynamic server meshing has servers spin up and down based on population of an area and any room or ship can potentially be a server. With dynamic server meshing, it's possible that large ships like a Javelin could be their own dedicated server. However, that might not always be the case as Cloud Imperium want to avoid inflexible rules. It's going to be down to efficiency and it's going to be um, sort of aiming for a sweet spot so no single server is overloaded or underutilized at any given time is the idea. Cloud Imperium did say if none of the existing servers have enough spare capacity to handle an increase in load, we'll simply rent more servers from our cloud platform provider who I believe is still Amazon. How many players will be able to see each other in one space? What's the maximum that you're planning? We are aiming to increase our player count and our expectation is that we will support scenarios where 100 players can see each other at reasonable frame rates. However, as we start scaling our shards to support higher player counts, the likelihood that every single player within a shard can go to the same location and see each other without performance issues will decrease. This is where we will need to start implementing game mechanics that prevent these scenarios from happening too frequently. The absolute limit is hard to predict until some of the new technology comes online and we can start to measure performance. Cloud Imperium did say don't expect player counts to increase much with the first version of sharding basically. Is the true end goal one single shard for all players? This is our ambition, however giving a definitive answer is not possible at this point. They will start with many shards per region and then start to reduce those slowly with the goal of one shard per region overall. Once they have optimized that, they will then try and merge all regions together as a global mega shard. However, this may be prohibitive based on latency and technology. The economy will be global and reflected in each shard at real time, um, so they will share the same economy. Um, you will be able to play with friends in other regions, or at least they do not plan to limit you from doing so. What is copied between shards then? So they share databases, but not necessarily states at runtime. Some features such as player outposts or mineable resources implement special code that will replicate a global state to all shards. So an outpost may exist in multiple shards in parallel and slowly, relative to the speed of real-time play, replicate its state between shards. This isn't an instant replication. A door opening and closing will not be replicated, for example. However, a persistent state like a door being locked or unlocked may be replicated between shards. To give another example, each shard has a unique version of a mineable rock, but the overall amount will be replicated between shards. So when players start to mine a certain area, the global resource map for this area will be modified and the number of mineable rocks in that location will be affected on all shards. If I make a base on a moon, will my base be reflected on the other shards when I'm not online? Claiming land for your base will claim this land on all shards, and they plan to replicate your base on all shards. However, only one shard will have an active version of that base, with other shards spawning a limited access or read-only version of that same base. For example, a base will 
give full access and the ability to expand in the shard the owner currently plays on, while on all other shards this base may spawn with locked doors in an immutable state. The full design is not 100% established yet though and might change. Can an asset as small as a bullet travel between shards and servers? No. Something like a missile um, can travel between multiple server nodes though um, because they will take authority of that missile as it travels between them. Bullets are actually spawned client side so a unique version of the bullet is spawned on each client and server node so and they don't travel in the same way. Uh, what will prevent large groups of blues and large groups of reds ending up in an echo chamber of shards together? Players will not permanently be assigned to shards as the matchmaking system assigns a new shard for the select region on each login. In the future, the matchmaking system will help match players to shards based on multiple parameters, friends, reputation and various other stats that will help them have a semi-diverse collection of players. Will your character and ship always be in-game when you are logged out? When you log out, your ship will persist in the shard you were in until there are no players nearby and then automatically stream out and then when you log back in, it will travel with you to your new shard. If it gets destroyed while you were logging out or while you're logged out and there was a player next to you, then you'll wake up in a med bed. Items that are on the floor on planets will stay there, basically on the shard that you left them on, but they might not be in your shard when you return because you might be in a different shard. How much is new content dependent on server meshing now? While server meshing will allow us to start to scale up the number of players who can play together in Star Citizen, it will also enable us to start adding new content experiences. Right now, we're focused on using this to add new star systems. Designers can use this tech to have um, larger, more interesting areas, such as larger settlements or large ship interiors with denser numbers of AI and player characters. Server meshing could open the door to gameplay experiences that our designers have yet thought of. The biggest gain will be server performance. Right now, our server performance is pretty limited due to the sheer number of entities that we have to simulate on one server. This results in low frame rates and server degradation, causing the client to experience network rubber banding, um, lag, and other network desync issues. Once we have even the static mesh in place, we will be able to um, have server frame rates considerably higher, causing less of the symptoms. This will have little impact on client FPS though. However, as I said, network lag will be significantly reduced. Ping and tick rates will be improved as the number of locations in servers are well reduced because the server's taking on a small amount of areas. All the services are being built with these efficiencies in mind. What will players experience if a replication layer is shut down or dies? The client will remain connected to the shard, but Part or all of the simulation will temporarily freeze. The replication layer will spin up a new replicant node to replace the one that crashed and will recover the lost entity state from the persistence via entity graph. The client gateways and dedicated game server nodes that were connected to the old replicant will re-establish connection to the new one. Once everything is reconnected, the game will unfreeze for the affected clients. At this point, the client may experience some snapping and teleporting of entities. We're hoping that this whole process will be less than a minute. The hybrid or other server sort of services may crash, in which case you may be booted to the menu, but you should be able to jump back in where you left off. Boom! That's it for your summary of that server meshing Q&A. I'm happy to see that Cloud Imperium are really starting to nail down answers for some of these questions, and I feel that this is a lot less vague than when they've answered questions about this previously, which is very good. But what do you think? Will we see static server meshing next year, and with it, Star Citizen Alpha 4.0, and Pyro, and Jump Points, and a lot of that other cool content? Do you like their plans for this tech? Or do you think there are still some major problems and pitfalls? Are you looking forward to sharding and potentially being able to have one global super mega shard one day? Or do you think that's madness and uh, impossible to do? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. It's November and that means, yes, you're right, it's Nord VPN season. All those delicious Nords are collected together to make the finest VPN that I shield for on my channel. Not only is Nord VPN delicious, but it also protects. Check out the links below to get fantastic discounts or go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer. Do you dream of being at the controls of your spaceship in real life? Well, now you sort of can with Game Glass. It turns touchscreen devices into diegetic controllers for Star Citizen, and you can get the basic software free. Check it out in the links below. 
Every month we have a ship giveaway as well. This time it's for a Mercury Star Runner, a multi crew ship that will let you do a bit of everything in game now. Or at least most things, lots of things, lots of things in game now. In the future it might allow you to do smuggling and data running too. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos during November. More details down below. If you'd like to further support the channel, please consider clicking the join or thanks button under my videos or even becoming a Patreon. You get some cool stuff to show that you're a true supporter of mine and Zin's art, some exclusive polls, ways of shaping the channel, some exclusive videos, all that sort of jazz too. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the verse.